experience. We all crave to have those amazing experiences when we travel, don't we? The ones you can look back on and say, I did that. However, sometimes those feelings of anxiousness can get in the way, can't they? And even stop us from experiencing those beautiful moments in distant lands. Hello, and welcome to The Anxious Adventurer. I'm Katie Schlegel, your host here on The Anxious Adventurer podcast, and I'm an anxious adventurer. I know that may sound contradicting, but I'm here to tell you that if the thought of traveling somewhere brings up those feelings of anxiety or stress, you've come to the right place. I've traveled to over 17 countries around the world. I've lived in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and trekked across South America solo. I don't say these things to impress you. No, that is not what I'm here for. I say these things to let you know that every single one of those experiences had moments where my anxiety made me feel like I could not do it. So if that's how you feel or have ever felt, you're not alone. My hope for you, my dear anxious adventurer, is that you are inspired by these travel stories so that you too will be swept off into the world that traveling can open up for you. You just have to step out your door and don't you worry, I'm right here beside you. I wanted to highlight another one of Mariposa Sky's amazing artisans this week. This one is from Japan. Her name is Yuki. She is the artisan behind my Japanese knot jewelry collection. What makes her jewelry so unique is that it is based in Japanese tradition. It is artfully made by using traditional Japanese braiding techniques. And what makes her pieces extra special is that she creates each piece with every wearer in mind. Yep. So if you purchase one of her jewelry pieces, That means she created it just for you. I've been sharing all about Yuki over on Instagram this past week, so be sure to check it out. My Instagram handle is mariposaskies. Link is in the show notes, and I'd love for you to give me a follow. Before we go on our next adventure, I want to thank everyone who has taken the time to rate and review the podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Sincerely, it means so much to me. If you haven't yet, I'd love it if you would rate or write a review of the podcast. And if you leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, I'll give you a shout-out for sure. Speaking of shout-outs, I have more exciting news about those podcast charts. Just this past week, The Anxious Adventure made it to number 11 for the Saudi Arabia Places and Travel Charts. How cool and fun is that? Again, I want to send a huge thank you to all my listeners in Saudi Arabia. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to my podcast. I never would have thought that I'd rank in another country. In fact, I did put that I wanted to be in the top 10 for travel podcasts on my vision board for this year. So it has been super fun to see that come into reality. Please know I am so very grateful to each and every one of you who listens. Thank you. I just have one more spot to go until I make it to number 10, so please keep listening. Today's episode is going to be a little closer to home. Last episode, I took you on a tour around South America for my 30th birthday. This week, I want to share with you about my 40th birthday that I just had. And you'll want to stick around to the end, too, because I'll be sharing my top 10 things I've learned in this decade of life between 30 and 40. And it's a great list, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I was chatting with a friend this past week, and we were talking about how a lot seems to go wrong on my trips abroad. And I have to admit, yeah, from the past adventures I've shared, it seems like nothing goes smoothly or according to plan. Now, if I'm being completely honest, I pick and choose the stories I want to tell you because there are important lessons that I learned in those travel stories that I think you could learn from too. So, I do that deliberately to show you that things go wrong when you travel, no matter how much planning you do. And let's be honest, how boring would this podcast be if I just shared with you only the travel stories where everything went my way and it was absolutely beautiful? Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of those moments that happen when you travel, 
But usually the way it goes is that you first need to overcome something in order to see the true beauty that lies within those moments. That being said, please don't let the thought of things going wrong deter you from getting out there and traveling. As I've said before, traveling can be really hard. And it's not just in other countries that things can go wrong or your plans go out the window. Even on my many trips here in the United States, things don't go according to plan. I want you to know that stuff happens no matter where you travel. The thing that counts is how you choose to react to it when the S-H-I-T hits the van. And this is what indeed happened on my recent 40th birthday road trip. It was late in March and I just turned 40. I've been planning for this trip since around the end of January this year, 2023. I went back and forth on what I wanted to do to celebrate my 40th. I thought about going abroad, but that felt like too much energy and preparation. I thought about Hawaii, but I'm not really a beach type of girl. I like me some good old mountains and pine trees. Plus, I tried to find a Hawaiian mountain getaway, but funny enough, people really don't go to Hawaii to stay in the mountains. Who would have thought? I also thought of flying somewhere. I've always wanted to go up to Northern California to Bigfoot country and check out the town of Willow Creek. Yep, the cat's out of the bag. Anyone who knows me knows that I love anything strange and paranormal. And I've been fascinated by the legends and stories of Bigfoot. (laughs) I know, I just love that stuff though. But alas, that was also a flight with a car rental and around a four-hour car drive. Again, I just was not feeling like putting in all that energy. I wanted something simple and easy for my 40th birthday. I almost gave up thinking, well, I'll just do something this year at some point, I guess. But I felt like this one was another big milestone in my life that I didn't want to just pass me by. So I started brainstorming some more. I researched mountain towns within driving distance to San Diego. That's literally what I put in my Google search. Lo and behold, a town popped up that had never been on my radar. So today I want you to put those passports away. Grab your car keys and fill up those gas tanks because I'm taking you to a little mountain town high in the San Jacinto Mountains of California. Join me on our next adventure, a road trip for my 40th birthday. This road trip adventure really started back when I first booked my cabin in the woods in Idlewild, California. Have you heard of it? Well, whether that was a yes or a no that you just gave me, I want to welcome you to Idlewild, California. Set amongst tall pines, sweet-smelling cedars, and legendary rocks, this little mountain community is nestled in Southern California's San Jacinto Mountains, which contains the 10,804-foot-high San Jacinto Peak. It's Southern California's second highest mountain. At an elevation of about 5,300 feet, Idlewild lies mostly within a high mountain valley bisected by a small year-round stream called Strawberry Creek. Much of the village itself is surrounded by national forest. If you are a nature lover, then this is a must-see oasis. It's located to the west and a little bit below Palm Springs, and about two hours and some change drive from either San Diego or Los Angeles. The community is often known for its artsy culture. In fact, Cecil B. DeMille discovered Idlewild in 1914 and began filming in Garner and Strawberry Valleys, including among his earliest productions, The Girl of the Golden West. Around 20 feature films were shot in and around Idlewild during the 1920s, and it remained a retreat for Hollywood personalities for years after. Elvis Presley even came to town to film the musical Kid Galahad in 1961. Even with all its Hollywood glamour days, the town of Idlewild has done a fantastic job at keeping its small town atmosphere. At a mile high, residents and visitors enjoy an alpine forest abounding in wildlife. The seasons are lovely with the scent of lilacs in the air in the spring, warm summers, 
vibrant autumn colors, and snowy winters. And it's in this little chunk of time between winter and spring that our story begins. I had finally found the perfect cabin in the woods to stay for my 40th birthday. It was idyllic. There was a fireplace in the main bedroom with huge picture windows that opened up to the back deck that overlooked a small creek that ran right by the cabin. It ticked all my boxes for my relaxing 40th birthday weekend retreat, including a private hot tub with a view of the creek and forest. While I was looking at all my different options to stay in Idlewild, I kept on reading the descriptions about winter storm mornings. Oh gosh, we won't have to worry about that. It will be the end of March, beginning of April. We'll be well into spring by then. However, the warnings did say winter could last up until the end of March in that area. But even with that, I thought, there's no way. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. I had this little nagging feeling in the back of my mind to just keep watch on the weather. So, I put Idlewild in my phone's weather app and hoped for the best. As it came closer to the day to head out on our road trip to Idlewild, it was not looking so good. My friend and I kept checking in with each other the whole week before. While the weather kept shifting and changing, it was looking like we were due to leave on the day of a big storm. And this is where my anxiety started to kick in. Yep, even on a simple road trip that was only two and a half hours away, I had anxiety. Now, I'm a SoCal girl through and through. I may love the mountains and want to call them home someday, but let's face it, the weather in San Diego? Let's just say we don't get snow. Sure, I had driven in snow before. Some of my family lives in Colorado, and we'd visit them in the winter for Christmas or New Year's. I've also done a few winter road trips to snowy destinations, so I knew how to drive in the snow. But that's not what got my anxiety rolling. It was the chains that you have to put on your car in order to drive on snow-covered roads. That's what got my stomach churning and my mind racing. All I could think about was having to pull over with the snow falling all around us, trying to put chains on my car. I had never put chains on a car before. I read blog post after blog post, watched YouTube after YouTube, and it didn't seem too hard, but... There was always a warning that if you put them on wrong, you could really damage your car. Well, great. That's all I needed to hear. At that point, I was over it and ready to cancel the whole darn weekend, just so I didn't have to deal with this anymore. I started to regret choosing Idlewild as my destination for my 40th birthday celebrations. Before tossing the trip out the window, I checked in with my friend and she had, in fact, put chains on a car before. So that eased me a little bit, but I still couldn't help but have this upsetting feeling that was making my stomach do flips. At that point, I was already headed down the rabbit hole of getting stuck on the side of the road, freezing to death because the car broke down due to my lack of being able to put chains on the car properly. Yeah, I've definitely trained my imagination to go to the worst case scenario quickly. But in order to get me back to the present moment, I've learned this little trick. You may remember it from one of my earlier episodes when I went on my first trip to Buenos Aires and everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Remember that one? It's a technique I hone in on when I'm in those moments of anxiety overwhelm. And this was definitely one of those moments. Okay, so here it is. I simply take a deep breath in through my nose, pause, and then exhale out through my mouth with a whoosh sound. I know that sounds a little different, but I want you to do it with me now so you can feel the difference and how calming it can be. Okay, ready? Take a deep breath. In through your nose. Pause. And then exhale through your mouth with a whoosh sound. (laughs) You can do it a few times. I find three to be the magic number for me. And also, closing your eyes helps too. Just don't close your eyes if you're driving. That would be all sorts of bad. (laughs) So that's what I did. And this is where the magic can happen. I took a moment and breathed deeply. And a question popped into my head. The question was simple. And it was this. 
What was the one thing that was stressing me out right then? I thought for a moment, and I came to the conclusion that finding the chains the day we were due to leave, and then the thought of having to put them on my car, were the two things that were causing me the most stress at that moment. And when I came to that conclusion, something clicked. Why not eliminate what was causing me the most stress and pivot to head toward the outcome that I wanted? Well, I was super impressed. I knew that that was the right course to take. How? I immediately felt a sense of peace and ease. I knew it was my intuition guiding me here. There's no doubt about that. We have come to know each other quite well during all these years of traveling together. So I came up with a game plan, a plan B, if you will. My friend and I had already decided to stop at a winery in Temecula to have a bite to eat on the way up to Idlewild. It was our halfway point. So I did a quick search for hotels in Temecula, and they weren't a bad price, even less expensive than buying chains for my car that I'd probably never use again. So I kept that in the back of my head and ran it by my friend, letting her know we may just spend the night in Temecula and then go up to Idlewild in the morning. She felt good about that decision, so I picked her up, as planned, later that afternoon, and off we went. Finally, we were off on my 40th birthday road trip to Idlewild. We headed up towards the mountains at around 3 p.m. that day. As we drove, we talked about a cutoff time of when we would decide if we would head up that night or go up the next day. At first, we said 5.30. But then when I checked in with my gut, I felt like 6 p.m. was a better time. So we settled on that. We made it to Temecula without a hitch and settled in at our favorite spot. I felt really good about our plan B, so much so that I was able to relax and enjoy the day. Throughout dinner, I kept on checking on the road conditions. I checked the road conditions at 5 p.m. They were still requiring chains. I checked again at 5.30. Still chains. Ugh. At this point, I thought for sure we were just going to stay in Temecula that night, which was fine, but it was not what I envisioned for my 40th birthday. At around 5.45, 5.50 that day, I checked it one last time, and I kid you not, the chain requirements were lifted and the roads and weather were clear, giving us a green light to move forward with our plans. We were so excited. Finally, the time had come for us to head up the mountain. The drive up there was a little precarious. It was night, and the roads were wet and a little icy. Luckily, my dad had let me borrow his car that had all-wheel drive, so I felt a little safer driving in such conditions. Once we arrived in Idlewild, the directions we were given to our cabin in the woods were not the best. I'm leaving out the details here, but I'll give you the idea. Here's what they said. If you're coming from town head up such and such road and turn left at the street with all the totem signs across the street from the such and such inn. Cross the small bridge and follow the road until you see another totem pole with signs and take a left. At the end of the road, a third totem pole will be there. Take a right at the totem pole and we are such and such driveway on the left. It's the driveway with the two stone pillars. As you can imagine, in the dark, after a big storm, it was difficult to find. We turned down some roads we shouldn't have and drove back and forth for a good 20 minutes trying to find this cabin. One wrong road we turned down, we almost did get stuck. I started to panic, but again, I remembered that deep breath, and once the wheels turned a couple times, we were free. It was at that point my friend had the genius idea to use Google Earth Maps to find this place. We made it to our cabin in the woods late that night. I was driving extra carefully, plus we had to stop and get some birthday provisions beforehand. (laughs) But we made it. And I'm so glad we did because honestly, waking up the next morning in that cabin was so magical. I was transported to a winter wonderland. I couldn't help but smile and giggle at just how perfect and serene everything was. I put on my boots, yep, and my PJs, and went outside to take in the white-covered wilderness that laid before me. The creek was bubbling its way down the mountain. 
A family of squirrels were playing around in the snow. The birds were singing. I wanted to pinch myself. It was so perfect. And that's when it hit me. I had gotten my birthday wish. You see, I wished for some sort of surprise for my birthday. Something to make it memorable and special. Little did I know what the universe had in store for me, and that there would be, of course, a lesson thrown into the mix as well. But when my eyes opened that morning to that magical winter landscape, it all made sense. That moment in time would not have been so beautiful if I had not gone through the little bit of upheaval beforehand. It made the whole weekend experience that much more sweet and savory. The rest of our time was spent sitting and relaxing the days away while eating good food, drinking yummy wine, and ending our days in the hot tub under starry nights while surrounded by snow-covered forests. I know, it sounds like a dream, doesn't it? My friend even got me a pottery making class where I made two pieces that actually turned out pretty good for my first time. We talked for hours on end while listening to Lana Del Rey on an old-time record player. It was so darn good and soul-affirming. We even got a couple nights in with the locals at a wine tasting room in town where they had live music playing. It was so relaxing, peaceful, incredibly magical, and exactly what I wanted to do for my 40th birthday to ring in this next decade of life. So you see... Even in your own country and city, things don't always go according to plan. But when you come to a fork in the road, and trust me, those forks in the road always come up during your travels, there's just no getting around them, you can either choose the road that stresses you out to the point you give up and you don't go one step further, or you can pivot and choose the other path, the one where you take a deep breath and check in with yourself to find a solution. There's always a solution. You just have to pause in order to see it. And my hope, my dear anxious adventurer, is you choose the latter. Before I leave you today, I promised you my top 10 things I've learned in this decade of life between 30 and 40. So without further ado, here they are. Number 10. Traveling can be an amazing thing for you to use to either escape or to heal. Number nine, the adventure is never really over. With every ending comes a new beginning. Number eight, traveling this beautiful planet has been my greatest teacher in life by far. Number seven, you never know what is going to happen in the future. So live in the present and really Enjoy each moment. Number six, surround yourself with the right kind of people. Those who will support you, encourage you, lift you up, and challenge you in a gentle but direct way. Number five, gratitude and appreciation are learned skill sets, but once you get the hang of them, you can tap into the amazing divine flow of life. Number four, you can't control what happens in life, but if you learn the art of surrender, your life cannot control you. Number three, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Dr. Wayne Dyer. And number two, death is not the end. It's a transition, a graduation of your soul. And last but certainly not least, the top number one thing I've learned in these 10 years between 30 and 40 is trust your intuition. It's the one thing that is always looking out for your best interest and will never lead you wrong. Okay, that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed that little road trip adventure and escape to the mountains of Southern California. Before we end this episode, this is the part where I ask you for those travel stories. If you have a travel story where you learned a significant life lesson or where you met someone along the way that had a big impact on your life, I want to invite you to come on the podcast and be one of my guests for a future episode. 
please reach out and get in touch with me at anxiousadventuresclub at gmail.com. I'd love to start featuring you, my listeners, and your amazing travel adventures here on the podcast. And as you can see from today's story, they don't always have to be trips to other countries. I really want you to know that this is a safe place to tell your stories. So if you're not feeling up to being a guest, there is another way for you to get your travel adventures out there for others to hear. And that's via email. I want to start collecting your stories and sharing them here on the podcast. All you have to do is email me at anxiousadventuresclub at gmail.com. Put in the subject line, my travel experience, and then fill that email with your story or stories. Feel free to include any tips or lessons you've learned along the way. That way, this podcast can become a co-creation between you and me and really start to help all those anxious adventurers out there become more brave and knowledgeable. I'm still waiting for this one to catch on, but I know it's going to be so good when it does. So as always, I can't wait to see those stories in my inbox. Have a question for me? I'd love to answer. Just hit me up on Instagram at Guys. You can DM me anytime. I love to talk travel and help out any way that I can. And if it's a question I think would benefit us all, then I'll share it in one of the upcoming episodes. Instagram is also the place where I'll share all the photographs, videos, and visuals for each podcast episode. This week, you may just see that beautiful winter wonderland, a tour of the cabin in the woods where I stayed, as well as some fun times with my friend. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a little, laughed a little, and my hope is that it left you with some things to think about. All right, that's it for now. Until next time, my dear anxious adventurers. Ciao. Besos.